Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology. In this presentation, I'll be showing you how to uh, find the forces in the cables right here, these five cables that are there, and uh, we will be using equilibrium equations for that. Okay, um, let's go and look at this. The problem statement says, update the equilibrium diagram with the magnitude of the forces in the cables and indicate tension or compression with arrowheads. Now when we draw the FBD free body diagram of joint A and joint B, those are the only two that we're going to need to draw free body diagram from, we will need to replace these support cables with forces. Okay. Now. A free body diagram is really a part of a structure. You cut it away and you replace all the supports with forces. So that's what a free body diagram is. Once we've got drawn a free body diagram, we'll use these two equilibrium equations to solve for the unknown forces. Now we have a mass here, 252 kilogram. That's how I know it's a mass, it's because of the unit. Now I have to change that into a force and we will do that in the next slide. Now, whenever we are looking at a free body diagram and trying to solve for forces, we have, a, we have to have a minimum of one known force and a maximum of two unknowns, okay? You have to start off with some number to get numbers, right? So when we look at, uh, we, we could convert this mass into a force, so we're good there, and then we could, uh, use each one of these equilibrium equations to solve for the other two forces. Now, one equilibrium equation could solve for one force. The other one could solve for the other force. You cannot use the equilibrium equation again. You only could use them one time for every FBD. So when I draw the FBD for point A, I could use them one time each. When I draw it for point B, I could use it one time each. Okay? So, the other thing is that uh, cables, they only could have an effect on the point of application in tension. If I were to pull on this cable, then it'll have an effect on here. If I push on the cable, it just collapses and there's no effect to the point of application. When we look at uh, how do you show tension, it is always an arrow that's acting away from the point of application. Now this one will be acting away because it's a cable, it's in tension. This one will be acting away, it's a cable in tension. This one will be acting away, a cable in tension. So it makes our work easy. The, the tricky part or something that we have to be careful about, when we solve for this force here, it's acting away, a cable has tension all the way through. So this one will be acting away too. It'll have the same magnitude, but it'll be acting away from B and it'll be acting away from A, right? So we have to remember to switch when we draw the second FBD. Let's go to solving this now. Here's an FBD of point A. I have to have a label. Each one of the forces has to have the four components of a force. It has to have a magnitude, a direction in this case is horizontal, the sense is the arrowhead, and the point of application is there. This one has the same thing. I could convert this, uh, this mass into a force. To do that, I have to multiply by the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. That will give me my magnitude in newtons, 2472 newtons. Okay, so now we have a force. We don't have a mass anymore. We have magnitude, the direction is vertical, the sense is down. It's not up, it's down. Point of application is right there. Now this one is different from these two because it's an angular force. Now when we are looking at adding forces, right, we only could add them in the same direction because forces are vectors, right? They are vectors. We have to break this down to its horizontal components and vertical component. Right? Horizontal and vertical component. The horizontal component could be added to this guy because they have the same direction. The vertical component of this could be acted, uh, added to this guy because they have the same direction now. So that's how we deal with, with forces and vectors. Now, let's go and choose which one of the 
two equilibrium equations we will use first. Now, this one is an easy choice, actually, because for you to get a number for these unknown forces, you have to start off with a number, right? You cannot start off with no number and get a number. I mean, it just doesn't work. You'll end up with a label again. Now, so I need to go and start off with summation forces in the y direction, okay? And uh, let's go and look at how that equilibrium equation is uh, manifest itself. We have summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Acting up is positive. So any force acting up in the y direction is going to be considered positive for the calculation. Once we have the direction, we could uh, ignore the minus and plus signs. To get the component of this guy, it's acting up. It's going positive, right? It's going positive, this, this small component here. The angle is in here opposite over hypotenuse which is sine so the magnitude sine 21 degrees will give us that component so the magnitude which is a b sine 21.5 degrees positive because this component will be going up the next vertical component that we have we already calculated the magnitude of that it's 2472 and that's going down it's going to be a negative force 2472 minus equal to zero. There's only two. There's only two vertical components. So we could equal it to zero. I'm going to take this 2472 over to the other side. It becomes positive. I'm going to divide out sine 21.5 degrees. That is the uh, that is the equation that we come up with. When you crunch the numbers for that, you will have 6745 newton. So it's telling you that this guy is 6745. You have solved for AB. You have to update your FBD with that magnitude. You could now ignore the, the label that represented the magnitude. The next equation that we have available to us, well, we've used this one time already. I can't use it again for the same FBD. So there's only one that I have that I could go to, and that it would be summation of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. Going to the right is positive. So all forces acting to the right, this would be a positive force. Okay. Now, we have this component going to, to the left, which is going to be a negative component, and this one going to the right. I'm going to have two terms in this equation. This one is a vertical. It doesn't have a horizontal component. Okay. It does not have a horizontal. Let's start off with this guy here, it's positive. That's just my way of, uh, I don't like the negative out front, so I always try to start off with a positive, uh, a positive force. AE is there. No calculation necessary there. This one, we're going to need to calculate the horizontal force here. Okay, We have the angle adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse will be cos. Right? So it'll be the magnitude that we know now cos 21.5 degrees. Magnitude, cos 21.5. Because this force is acting to the left, it's opposite to our sign convention, it has to have a minus sign in front of it, is equal to zero. There's only two horizontal forces. I'm going to go and solve for AE now. I'm just going to take this over to the other side and crunch the numbers, and I have 6276 newtons acting to the right. So I'm going to update my FBD right here. There's nothing else to be solved here. Nothing else to be solved here. This is done with. I have to go to point B and draw the FBD for that. And there's point B. And remember I, I spoke about cables have to be in tension, right? So this one is in tension. The force coming from B has to act away too. That's also in tension. The horizontal uh, angle here is going to be that horizontal. They're called alternate interior angles, right? If you put a horizontal there, then it'll have the same angle as this one here, okay? So now when we are looking at this, we have one known force and two unknown. So we could solve this. We have uh, a minimum of one known force and a maximum of two unknown. The other thing that we have to look at, this is a vertical angle. We cannot treat it like a horizontal angle. They're different in by their nature. 
we have to decide which one of the equation, again, summation forces in the y, summation forces in the x, that we're going to use. Now, this one is a little bit more difficult than previously. We had a number, we, we went with y direction, that was the right thing to do. When we look at this guy here, if we were to go into x direction, we would have to work out the component for this, which is a known number. We would have one unknown. We would have another unknown in here. So we have two unknown in an equation. We can't solve for it. In both of these equations, we ended up with one unknown, right? You can't have two unknowns. So let's go and try the y direction. If we work out the known component here, and we have one unknown component acting up here. This one doesn't have a vertical component. So we have one, one known, one unknown. We could solve that one. So let's go and use summation forces in the y direction. Summation forces in the y direction is equal to zero. And when we look at uh, going with the positive one, positive component here, we have uh, BD. We know that this is a vertical angle because the angle is in there. It's 12 degrees. And we are looking at this component right here, the vertical component, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse will be cos. So it'll be the magnitude cos 12 degrees. And it's acting in the positive direction. There it is. That represents that component. Right? For this guy here, it is going down. The component is going down. So that's going to be minus. Minus is right there. We know the magnitude for this one is 67.45 newtons, and we want the vertical component opposite over hypotenuse, which will be sine. So I'm going to take 67.45 sine 21.5 degrees minus in front of it equals to zero. We only have two in the y direction, two forces. So then I could now solve for BD. I have to take this over to the other side, make it positive, divide out cos 12 degrees. And that is what this equation is set up to do here. We're going to end up with a number of 25.27 newtons, right? And that is uh, BD, so 25.27. I'm going to update the FBD with that number, okay, 25.27. Let's go and use the only other equation that we have available to us, which is summation forces in the x direction. Right. Summation forces in the x direction is equal to zero, acting to the right. Any force acting to the right is positive or considered to be positive. When we look at uh, what we have in the x direction, we have a component that's going to the left minus component that's going to the right plus component or a force that's going to the left, which is minus. So I'm going to have two minus and one plus, right? I'm going to start off with my plus guy first. 67.45, I want the x component adjacent over hypotenuse, which will, will be uh, cos. So we have 67.45 cos 21 degrees, 21.5 degrees. For the next one, which is this guy here, it's going to be going to the left. It's going to be minus. So if I want the x component, opposite over hypotenuse will be sine. It'll be minus 25, uh, minus 25, 27, and it'll be sine 12 degrees. So there it is, right there. Equal to zero, equal to zero, right here. I have to include BC also. Sorry about that. I have the first component, the second component. I have to include BC, which is going negative. I'm going to take BC over to the other side and then just crunch the numbers on this. I'm going to get 5750 Newton acting to the left. If this number turned out to be a minus number, it means my assumption was incorrect. The arrowhead has to go the other way. But because all of these are cables, I knew that my assumption the arrowheads would be acting away. So I got them all right in the first place. But any time that you have a minus, your assumption is incorrect. And I'm going to update my FBD with 5750. And I have all of the forces solved for. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. There you go. Five of them solved for. 
And that's all there is to uh, solving an equilibrium equation such as this. I hope that this presentation helps you with your understanding of the material. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.